time. Welcome. Coffee is about making connections. Coffee, though, is inherently disconnected. We buy coffee from places thousands of miles away and transform it into a product that further distances its consumers from its origins. Most baristas never get the opportunity to go to origin to connect with their producers. To make up for the gap, we focus on knowing every detail about our coffees, expounding on the importance of things like altitude, terroir, variety, and processing to best represent them to those we serve. But this information is so abstract that our points rarely land. And often it creates even more distance between our guests and our coffees. So how do we bridge the gap between the coffees that we love and the people we love to serve? We bridge that gap by creating a connection to a coffee personally, and then connecting personally with our guests through a shared experience. So, our connection to this coffee begins in 2020, when we first met the Ducamos. And despite travel restrictions, we were able to maintain a strong connection through their exciting coffees. This past February, our green coffee buying team, Jake and Oliver, were able to visit them for the first time since 2020. The coffee I'm serving you comes from their Gata farm, where Ken and Ducamo grows Ethiopian heirloom coffees at 1800 meters under the cover of a 100-year-old forest. While there, Jake and Oliver camped overnight, their first time ever camping at a coffee farm, and awoke to near freezing temperatures. These cold overnights, paired with daytime highs in the 70s, extend cherry maturation time, leading to the small, dense cherries that you can see here in my hopper. While there, they were also able to witness the processing techniques that lead to the beautiful flavors in your espresso course hand-picked, whole cherries, are rinsed, floated, and then sealed in an oxygen-free tank to ferment anaerobically for four whole days. While there, oh, excuse me, the cool overnights help the processing team at Gata to really maximize that fermentation time, leading to the intensely floral, tropical coffees that you'll be tasting today. Post-fermentation, the coffee was dried on raised beds for three weeks dry hauled, and prepared for export. Now judges, while I'm finishing extracting your espressos, let's talk about how to drink these. So as I serve them, go ahead and assess the crema, but wait for my instructions to enjoy. You'll be stirring 10 times and taking three sips in total. Awesome. And while I have your attention, I want to point it to the infographics in front of you. Excuse me. Take this moment to go ahead and attach them to your clipboards like so, so that you can reference your tasting notes and recipes at any time during this presentation. Go for it. All right. We good to go? Excellent. Let's talk a little bit about the flavors. So. When tasting this coffee with my team, we noticed that as the espresso cooled, the flavors opened up. The sweetness became more pronounced and the acidity rounded out. And so to maximize that juicy sweetness and sparkling acidity, I've extracted over these chilled whiskey stones. Your recipe today was 20 grams in, 64 grams out in 27 seconds. Get ready for your flavors and tactile calls. Awesome. So the first thing you're going to taste is one of my favorite tropical fruits from back home and I'm excited to tell you about it. It's called pink guava, or strawberry guava, or strawberry lily koi. It kind of tastes like strawberry mixed with a mellow pineapple if you've never had it before. Then, white peach, a floral stone fruit, and baking spices, like clove and cardamom, with a finish of elderflower, a fruity florality. Your espresso will have a medium, lightweight, with a silky texture, and a long, slightly dry finish. All right, judges, go ahead and stir 10 times and enjoy. Give it up for those espressos!
to be honest, oh, excuse me, the description of gata I've given you is a really common way for us to talk about coffee with our guests, but it doesn't always get them excited when sharing this coffee with them. It wasn't its tasting notes or the origin story that got us excited, but rather how we connected to the coffee and how enthusiastically we talked about it. Your next course will focus on creating a connection to this coffee framed in a familiar context, a milk beverage. When working on the roast profile of this coffee with our roasters, John and Peter, we noticed that with less development, we amplified the citric acid, but with more development, we muddled that stunning floral complexity. Our intention was to highlight all of those beautiful tropical fruits and floral notes showcased in your espresso course with a hot, fast roast. Your coffee today was roasted in nine minutes and 42 seconds with a drop temperature of 405 degrees Fahrenheit, highlighting all of the flavors that I love. Now, often when we're excited about a coffee, it makes excellent espresso, but it falls short in milk. Over 90% of the beverages that we serve on a day-to-day -day basis are made with milk. For this course, I've extracted your espressos to 24 seconds to allow the milk, or to allow the espresso to still have that bright, fruity acidity and sweetness and pop through the milk. The milk I'm using is catered specifically to the roast profile of this coffee. 50 grams is Alexander Farms 6% whole milk that I froze and melted for 50% of its total weight, isolating the higher fat content liquids. The remaining 120 grams comes from Smith Brothers and it's their non-fat milk. They're a local dairy in Washington. Combined, these two add a buttery creaminess that transform the flavors of my delicate espresso into something a little bit more approachable. Creating an experience that is easy to share is one of the primary ways that we can begin to bridge the gap between our guests and our coffees. Now judges, I have some drinking instructions, of course. As I serve you, go ahead and assess the visuals, but wait for my instructions to enjoy. You'll be taking four sips and stirring 10 times. While we're at it, let's talk tactile, or excuse me, let's talk flavor experience. In this, you'll taste, on the first and last sip, a sweet berry cereal, like oops, all berry, Captain Crunch. Throughout, caramelized sugar, like the top of a creme brulee. And lingering on the finish, a sweet, but slightly dry, dark Jamaican rum. Okay, judges, stir 10 times, and please enjoy. All right, big round of applause for those milk beverages. To be honest, in preparation, I felt really disconnected to this coffee. How was I supposed to create a connection to a coffee that I had barely any experience with? We only just started buying this coffee in 2020. I've never met Canon, nor have I ever been to Gata. But this coffee did give me something to connect to. The flavors of tropical fruit, because they reminded me of home, Hawaii. 
Your next course will focus on showcasing all of the flavors in this coffee that I love and how I've connected to it. So let's get started. So we're gonna be building this in my hyper chiller over the four shots of espresso I extracted earlier. Chilling the beverage will help to increase your perception of acidity and decrease bitterness, making it more like the tropical fruits I love. These next two ingredients focus on some flavors from home. On the cupping table in Ethiopia, we tasted dragon fruit first. And coincidentally, my neighbors actually grew it when I was growing up. So if you've never had it before, it tastes like pear, kiwi, and lychee. That all enhanced the tropical fruit notes of the string. Then we'll be adding 10 grams of Calpico, a lactically fermented drink that tastes like sweet yogurt. It's one of my favorite childhood drinks. 10 grams will help to increase the tropical fruit acidity of this drink because lactic acid is the same thing that's created in the anaerobic processing of my coffee, making it perfect to complement the beverage. We're gonna be adding a couple more ingredients, some of my favorite aspects of this coffee. So, back to the cupping table in Ethiopia. This coffee's aftertaste lingers with a fruity florality, much like the elderflower you tasted in your espresso. So we're gonna be adding 13 grams of an elderflower syrup made of dried elderflower, water, sugar, and salt to enhance that lingering elderflower taste. And then every iteration of this roast profile had baking spices like bitterness that complemented the tropical fruit acidity of this coffee. And so to complement the flavors of my chilled espresso, I'll be adding 10 grams of an aromatic bitter that I made from gentian root, bitter orange peel, black cardamom, uh, Sichuan pepper infused into water, glycerin, and burnt honey. Those bitter elements will help to complement the flavors of tropical fruit. Awesome. We'll be blending everything all together with one egg white. Three times. Blending with an egg white will add a silky texture to this beverage, much like the silky texture you experience in your espresso. as well as add a layer of foam to carry the volatile aromatic compounds of tropical fruit, just like the volatile aromatics are carried by the crema in your espressos. Now, for our final ingredient, the famous Olympia Artesian well water, four ounces of it that was filtered and carbonated. This is the same water that we used to cup this coffee on arrival from Ethiopia for the very first time. Diluting with that water will help to increase your perception of that juicy sweetness and sparkling acidity, as well as to help the flavors open up. All right, judges, I have some drinking instructions while I garnish these for you. You'll be taking two sips. On your first sip, focus on the foam layer. On your second sip, dive below the foam. But please wait for me to call enjoy before you enjoy. We're just dusting with a little bit of dragon fruit powder to carry the tropical fruit aromatics as you drink, as well as harken back to that first flavor call on the cupping table. Now, first I'll give you the tactile experience and then flavors, okay? On your first sip, like I said, focus on the foam, where you'll notice that the texture is velvety with a slight effervescence. On your second sip, note that the liquid is slightly chilled with a medium weight and a long, slightly dry finish. For flavors, you'll taste pineapple, lychee, and orange juice, baking spices, with a finish of elderflower and lime zest. Coffee is about making connections. By sharing a coffee that I love with you and how I've connected to it, I hope that I was able to bridge this gap between you and this coffee too. All right, please enjoy. Give it up for those sig bevs. Time. Big round of applause, Reina Callejo, Olympia Coffee.
You did it. I did it. Yeah. How are you feeling? I, I'm sure we got the nerves out right beforehand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very dry. I, I try to make my humor a little dry, but I'm just, uh, doesn't work so well. <laughs> so how are you feeling after all of that? How has everything been going for you leading up to this moment for you? 